Well, the next topic we want to discuss is one that, quite frankly, we wish wasn't even an issue. We'd rather focus on the exciting happenings on Delmarva. Instead, we're addressing an issue that's devastating Delmarva. Two words, stealing the lives of our friends, our moms, dads, kids, coworkers, neighbors. Two words, powerful enough to instill fear in every person who hears them. Two words that we all need to start paying attention to and two words that we all need to stop, substance abuse. Perhaps you've heard this week on WBOC News about the Talbot Goes Purple campaign, a movement to bring awareness to substance abuse. And we're gonna to get to that in a few moments, but first we wanna make sure you understand what's going on right here on Delmarva. Now, to help with that, we have brought in Talbot County Sheriff Joe Gamble. Sheriff, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Good thank you for having me. Okay, now, to quote you, you have called this issue the deadliest drug epidemic in our history. It, it's the deadliest drug, drug epidemic in the history of our country, and that's just not Joe Gamble's opinion. That's the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control um, opinion, is, and it's not an opinion. It's based on fact on the deaths. Um, our deaths in Maryland specifically have gone, in 2015, we lost 1,500 people to overdose deaths. The next year, we went to 2,000 deaths oh. in Maryland. We, we jumped 500. And to put it in perspective, um, when I was a state trooper, our focus was traffic because of traffic deaths. So the, we, we lose about 600 people a year on our highways. And just five, six years ago, uh, overdose deaths were less than traffic deaths. And this uh, overdose deaths pushed by the opiate epidemic um, has climbed three and more than three times traffic deaths in our state. And this year, we're on the course to be at 2,500 deaths in the state. Yes. So it is the deadliest drug epidemic that we've ever seen. In my 30 years in law enforcement, it's the, it's, it's the worst epi drug epidemic we, we've ever seen. And as we continue to look at those numbers and try to figure out how to react to that, um, the numbers just keep climbing. You know, and, it, and, and they're starting early. Um, this fact, this uh, percentage just absolutely scares me. 8% of Talbot County High School seniors have tried heroin. And that came out of a study um, that all the schools in the state um, do every two years. And when you look at Talbot County compared to all the rest of our counties, we're about average. Um, so it's no different. It's not going to be any different, maybe a point of a percentage in Wicomico or Dorchester or, or Queen Anne's or Caroline. And when you look at our overdose rates per capita, Talbot's slightly under what the norm is for the shore, but it's very, it's very slight. So these numbers, you can use these numbers all across the state um, when you look at the amount of kids that are involved in this. And what, you know, every day as sheriff, I have people contact me about substance abuse issues in their family reaching out for look, looking for help and just people that just come ask you on the street sheriff I don't understand why we have this problem on the shore um, well when you think about it heroin is the end of the uh, of the substance abuse cycle for a lot of people but what people don't realize is this is that four out of five people who become addicted to heroin start with prescription opiates prescription pain medication in their own that they get, and 65% of those people get it from their own homes or they get it from friends and family's homes, those leftover pills from our surgeries. It's available, it's close. It's available, it's close, and what, what's happening is this, is that young people don't realize that they see that prescription and people are abusing it, and it's from a doctor, right? Even though they're misusing it, it's from a doctor, it's in a brown bottle, so, it has to be not that bad for you, but when you think about it, prescription opiates, and heroin is an opiate, it's the same drug. I had a young man tell me, um, young man that I coached, I've coached at Easton High School for about a dozen years. Um, when I started this, uh, this sheriff thing after I left the state police, um, I interviewed kids that I had coached that were actually heroin addicts. And I went to them, and they were in some form of recovery, and I went to them and I said, tell me your story. And we walked through their story. I, I'd meet them for lunch or buy them a cup of coffee. We'd sit down and talk. Well, a number of these young people, or all of these young people started with 
it was actually it starts with early drinking, middle school, marijuana use. Marijuana use becomes daily for many. And then a percentage of those kids, somebody introduces them to prescription pain pills that they've got out of their own parents' medicine cabinet, their friends' parents, their grandmother, their aunt's medicine cabinet. And then they become addicted to those. So they're actually opiate addicts on the pills. And then as those pills run out, they can't get those pills, then they go to heroin. That's why it's reaching every segment. I mean, we have some great families in Talbot County, and I've been some to, in some of the g most wonderful people's homes whose sons and daughters have become addicted because of the prescription pills. And what one young man told me that I coached, he, he told me, he says, Coach Joe, if I had known I was snorting, because I crush up the pills and snort it, if I had known I was snorting synthetic heroin, because it was pain pills, I would have never done it. In his mind, heroin wasn't an option. But since that? it was camouflaged as a prescription, right. you know, let his guard down, made a mistake, became addicted, became mm -hmm. addicted in college, in graduated a full-blown heroin addict from college, came back to Talbot County as a full-blown heroin addict. Okay, let me, let me ask you something here. Um, we're talking about the kids that you've interacted with. We're talking about the people that get into it. What kind of effect is this having on the families of the addicts? It's totally destroying families. Just yesterday morning I got a text from a mom who's looking for her adult son um, and believed he was in Baltimore somewhere and sent me a text that said that he's eating out of garbage cans. We can't find him. Can you help? Um, and it was a Talbot County young man who became so addicted that he went to Baltimore and became homeless. Um, and it's just ripping families apart. I gave a talk at Easton High School just a few days ago. When I left, um, got in my police car, I wasn't in my car two minutes, I was heading home, and got an overdose call at a convenience store in Talbot County, right in Easton. I was the closest unit there, I got there, one of the Easton police officers came up, gave the young lady Narcan, revived her, but it's, it's happening every day. And what we're not realizing as parents is those prescription opiates are leading. Four out of five kids that get started on this misuse prescription opiates that they get from our own homes. So it's, it's, it's a simple way to help reduce the future addicted addiction levels. Right. And we, we talked about it a little bit yesterday about what our minds conjure up the kind of person or you know the stereotypical person who's on drugs and 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 that's not the case. Uh, these no people I've been in million dollar homes Lisa in Talbot County good families um, on overdose calls with my guys um, and then we'll bring in people non-fatal overdose calls and we'll bring in people to try to help them get support but these are really good families these are these are kids that look like my kids these are kids that my kids played sports with in high school. These are kids that your kids are playing sports with in high school, and these could be your kids. Um, that's what people don't understand. They think it's not going to be my child. Well, that's a lie, and if you believe that, then, then you're, you're risking your kid's future. You've got to take control, educate your children about prescription opiates, question your doctor about what they're giving. Do we really need pain pills when we have a molar taken out? you know, 5, 10, 20, 30 tablets mm -hmm. of, of pain medication. And once, just say we do need that, once you're done with it, lock it up. We have laws to lock our guns up. Yeah. Gun crime, it doesn't even come close to the amount of people that we're losing because of those prescription opiates. It's not even close. So parents need to, to take that warning. And Thank you for what you're doing, Sheriff. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you very, very much. Thank you.